You may have heard about Dubai's recent electric rain-making efforts, not terribly unlike those you've heard in China or elsewhere except this time instead of seeding clouds. They directly electrified and enhanced condensation and made it rain. It's based on the now well understood electrostatic attraction of water, dust, and aerosol cloud particulates. It's one of the most important aspects of Billy's experiments in our plasma lab. Water is not only attracted to charge and electric current, but will follow that current as well. One of the most critical moments was when he demonstrated that gravity is no match for the power of electricity, as the waters below were pulled up, pushing against the rock above it. Another instance was the importance of the magnetic fields, where application of a current through an anode and a cathode caused considerable spin to the water, and then, when the magnet was revealed and reversed, it had been placed below the tub. The current flowed in the same direction, but the spin changed. The violent motions we saw with the arc discharges to the droplets were matched in the rapid forcing of the entire electrified fluid, pretty much instantaneously. We have seen studies confirming this effect on clouds, from those treating nuclear tests to cosmic rays to the global electric circuit tying the ionosphere to the crust and through the entire atmosphere, of course all intimately linked with the outer magnetic field of the planet, and in its current weakening, we have been showing how we expect and indeed observe an increase in atmospheric electricity, lightning records, and we've been showing and discussing the upward bolts and record lightning storms being seen and often filmed by many of you across the world. And with it, often come stories like this, far more frequent the last few years, and also the record rains. The four inches an hour rainfalls are preposterous things to be seeing so often, but they have an explanation in Earth's weakening magnetic field and our water vapor atmosphere, the same explanation for all of the lightning. And so we come to the recent story covered in the morning show, and when I titled the video, The Waters Below, I figured the flood was coming to the comment section. And if you don't like biblical references, it's not anyone's fault that this time the earth has revealed that the depths match certain descriptions from the Bible, Zoroastrian texts, Vedic and Sanskrit texts, and more. The waters below are a real thing, and even before this revelation, we already knew there was high saturation down to two kilometers, and that the deep rock and mantle hid more than the entire ocean's worth of water in the miles below. This paper merely filled in the gaps. Our entire planet is saturated. It turns out there's just as much in the lower crust between the deep earth and the upper crust as there is above and below it. The electricity and magnetism of our planet is changing as we march through the cyclical magnetic excursion of earth. The atmosphere, crust, mantle, and more are all subject to these conductive and inductive connections. And everything we said to watch for the past decade is happening in terms of the lightning and the flooding and the dynamics of the upper atmosphere. The waters below are described across the world and time, and they have a perfectly plausible means of arriving at the surface, electrically. The charge and discharge process through the leaky insulator of the crust will not only allow for stronger vertical forcing of the waters below, but will constantly draw them upwards as the magnetic field of our planet enters its weakest state. The simple increase in atmospheric charge will attract the vapor just like it does in the lab. Of course, then you realize what that means for the weather and the extra hydrated, extra conductive fault zones, which will take the worst of the forcing. You begin to understand why the magnetic excursion, the weakening of the planetary field, is a major influence over the water, the atmosphere, the crust, and all of the conductive and electroreactive compounds found therein, including olivine, one of the most abundant, which self-translocates upon discharge. Yes, the grounding rod is just getting close enough to nudge and discharge, and the olivine flies. This is a major event on this planet. It's happened before and will happen again. Perhaps the only scientific way to pull off the waters below being seen at the surface would also work the earthquakes and the weather in the exact same ways described in those ancient stories. A coincidence, perhaps. Or perhaps, the power in charge has called us all to the playing field as the cosmic Super Bowl is about to begin. Who wants to start the next age of Earth? I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.